Okay, we're going to start off our custom user shape build. Uh, the first thing you need to have in place before you start off your build is your cut sheet. Otherwise, how will you build the object? So, we look over here, look at the dimensions, get all that down, make sure you're pulling from the right model number and all that stuff jives. Um, first thing you want to start with is some polylines. That will allow you to build the default construct for the object that you're trying to that you're trying to model up. Um, in most cases when I'm building something that's flanged I'll just go ahead and throw in a flange set that way I can make sure that the flanges uh, are the same uh, total uh, diameter. So once you have all that set up and you have your dimensional constraints built into your polylined object you can simply do a revolution so revolve your object around that center line and now you have so this of course I, I would match this to the flange but right now for the example I'm just showing you so that's what you do uh, polylines you can use 3d objects too like a sphere put that in there as well say if you had a ball of out or something like that and then uh, once done you're gonna union those objects together so union and one 3d object you want to make sure that you can click it move it and it all comes together or just click it and delete it and see if there's any 2D or any other material that you were using to build the object in the first place. Once all that's out of the way, you can go ahead and grab, you can go ahead and save your object. So here's one I've already constructed for our pressure control valve that we're building for this example. So as you can see, quite a few objects. Some of this came from the vendor and it's been modified for the different sizes. So as you can see, there's three components here. There's actually a valve body, there's an actuator, and there's actually a D uh, little controller right here. So these are three separate pieces, each with their own cut sheet. Um, if you build some of these objects over time, like for example, this uh, this valve was part of a different project, and then this actuator was part of a different project. If you keep these, then you can put together these more complex objects without having to spend time on uh, rebuilding. So that's why it's good to have something of an archive. As you can see here, uh, I have one from previous projects where it's eliminated by what type of component and the and the manufacturer and then inside the actual file names are based on size uh, class rating model number and then uh, again its type is reinforced so after you have your 3d object and you can verify that that is correctly what it is by going to your properties pane Let me bring that up here. and you can see that it's classified as a 3d solid so we're all good there Let's go ahead and start up the user create. Okay, we're in the user create function. Um, oh, but it said, hey, you don't have a size or a spec. So that's the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a spec selected. In this case, I'm running the testing, so we have to go to our setup and get that established first. There we are. And I'm going to be working in a spec. Yeah, my size range in this case will be six inches by six inches. So we go into the user create. It already preloads the size that we're running right here, and it loads the spec that we're running right here. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a, a name that will allow the user to know what they're selecting down the road. So the way I've done it is an abbreviation for the component pressure control valve and then we have uh, with its class rating uh, its engagement raised face threaded socket weld and uh, its manufacturer now there's a very limited number of characters but if you can get in the model number too like the V150 is what this one is then that's great um, sometimes the weight and leaf get locked up it depends on the component type uh, in this case you don't have to worry about it okay uh, our next step is going to be deciding. Oh, looks like I already named something that. So let's go ahead and make this two. If you already have this existing in here, like this one was already existing, uh, it's going to pull all that metadata from the previous build. So if you have two pressure control valve 150s ready face fissures, then uh, you can reuse that data table. In fact, you won't need to reuse it since you already have it built. Okay, so once you have your unique name uh, built up there, 
go ahead and put in a long description. Uh, the one I've used most commonly is this, pressure control valve, whatever number it is. If you don't know, you can put in X's. Okay, so now we have our pressure control valve. We've got the nomenclature, and it says, hey, see spec if you want more details. That way you don't have to know all the details uh, when you're putting in these descriptions. Okay, uh, we have, we're pulling from a block. It's going to be a block type, so uh, our 3D object is going to be taken and saved somewhere as a block. Um, the main size is 6. We're not reducing. If you were, you'd go ahead and click that. Um, go ahead and select our 3D object. Click it once, and then right click to close out your selection, seeing that's the only 3D object that you're selecting. It wants to have an insertion point. Uh, I prefer to do this in wireframe, but you can do it in uh, with conceptual one. So, as you can see, we just grabbed that center node at the end of the flange face. Okay, we just did define that. Um, we'll go ahead and define our connections now. So, you want to pull it from the way that you would be coming away from the component. So, which, and which side does the piping continue? Is what you need to be asking yourself. So it said, hey, okay, we got that point. And then I'm coming to the other side. And again, you kind of, there's a lot of points in there. So you want to make sure that you're grabbing that last one. Okay, and we're going out that way. And once I'm done, enter. And what happened now is I've defined my two points from which uh, the other piping is going to connect to. And now I have the option to define each of these points individually. Uh, since both this and the other side will have the same end condition, I can click this dial right here and say apply the same end type and rating to all ends. Okay, click on the end type, and they're both going to be flanged. And both can be flange 150. Okay, and the symbol is FL, and that applies to both. So now I don't have to come here to two because it's already been updated since we clicked that dial. Okay, you don't have to fill out this data, although it is sometimes advisable if you have rules that require that the components have matching classes or matching pressure ratings you want this filled out if you don't have those rules in play then this isn't super important okay uh, one of our last and most important thing is a ski and many of you should be familiar with the ski a ski is what uh, the system uses to identify the component when it generates the ISO also you can tell here uh, weight and length are now accessible so if you want to go ahead and modify those, uh, length and weight, these are metadatas. They're not actually going to affect the design of the component. They're just going to output on uh, if you double click the component in the model space. And this is what you'll see for length and for weight. Okay, so for our ski, you need to actually pull from your ski chart. That can be found in the start button down here on the left, going to CADWorks, whatever year you're running and then go into Isogen Help Files. It should be a folder. You click the folder and you double click symbol keys. After doing that, you get this nice little PDF pop up here. Now in our example, uh, we're gonna say that this is a ball valve. That's based on a ball valve and that's how we wanna represent it on the ISO. Now in the long run, if you really wanted to build something custom to show a specialty component, you could do that. I've seen it done. Um, here we. I've never seen anyone do it or ask for it, so right now we just go with regular valves. So you click on the valves, that's after you uh, expand out the introduction tab, go to the component type, and you can just click on the header. As you can see here, we're in the valves category. Ball valve is what we want. So there's two things you have to be aware of. The ski itself, in this column, and the PCF identifier. So this word and this word are going to be put into that component. So we have valve and VB star star, or asterisk asterisk. Uh, the two asterisks are there to hold the place of the in condition. So you'll swap that out with SW for socket weld, or SC for screwed, or FL for flanged, or BW for butt weld. Uh, in this case, we have flange, so this will end up being VBFL and valve. So let's go ahead and come over here. Our identifier, as you remember from the chart, is valve. And VB is what we got from the chart, and we know that the connections are FL, flange connections. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now that we have everything entered, 
And as you can see, the object is taken away from the current model. Uh, and it's thrown in here. Uh, we actually had another component already named PCV900. And there we are. Um, once you're completed this and it's in the spec view palette, that doesn't mean you're done. You want to go back to your spec. As you can see, it says, hey, there's been a modification outside the program. We go into the program, double click our spec again. It's updated. We should see two pressure control valves, same name. Uh, here's our one. We put a two on the end of the data table. Uh, here's all this, the information that we already inputted. If you want to come back and modify something, change its data table reference, add in a couple sizes, all of that's available here. Okay. Um, if you wanted to have a pipe schedule association. Okay. Uh, make sure you save that after it's updated and save your project. Now you have inputted a user shape into your spec.